My friends, can you all identify that snake? Comment down below and I'll tell you later if you're right or wrong. As it stands right now, it is dark and foreboding. We have some dark clouds overhead. We have some thunder cells over here building. I'm hearing thunder off in the distance and it is sprinkling rain. I better get in the forest and find a campsite. Oh yeah, there's a thunder cell over here making some noise. Talking about the weather, where I live, it is 82. Up here, it is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Feels incredible. Originally, my plan was to go to the very top of this mountain to a campsite that I haven't stayed at since, I don't know, maybe like four months ago, something like that. But as soon as I got down to the base of the mountain, I started hiking up. I could see that the sky is just dark, black. I'm hearing thunder. So I've decided that I'm going to camp a little bit closer. I've hiked in maybe three, four miles, something like that. Based upon what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, I think it's a good move. I want to get a tarp up before it's too late. It looks like someone's been here within the last six months or so. They kind of messed up this fire pit that I built. I camped here maybe a year ago, something like that. That was the last time that I was in this area. I think this is where I'm going to set up my camp. Unfortunately, this area here is rather sloped, so it's not great for a tent setup. Luckily, there's a pad over here that's rather flat. I guess in a pinch, I could pitch my tent over here. But this is where I built the fire pit. I could set up a tarp here. This is really the best location to pitch a tarp. Out of this entire area, at least. I'll tell you what, folks, because the chance of rain is so high and it's sprinkling already, let's get to work. Like, it's not especially hot, but I'm soaking wet. The humidity today is really high.
And just like that, my friends, the tarp has been set up. Super simple, super easy, and also super quick. Being able to set up a tarp, tie a knot quickly, and have it be secure all night long is super important. And that's especially true in an area like this that receives so much rainfall. At any moment, it can begin raining. And I tell you what, everyone, that brings up a good point. Let's talk about knots for a second. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. There are a million different types of knots out there, hundreds and hundreds of variations. What you wanna use is what you wanna use. I personally don't care, but I'm going to show you what works for me, what allows me to do the quickest setup possible and also the most secure. Ever so often in the comment section, I'll see someone mention something along the lines of like, oh, you should have done this knot. The thing is, they don't know what knot that I personally use because rarely it's not something I talk about, it's not something that I even show. So they're making that statement without even knowing what I've done, which is a warning sign. Most of the time when someone says something like that, they're really not that familiar with knots at all. They may know one knot and that's the knot that they're mentioning, which is kind of funny. Talking about the knots that they recommend, it's one of those things where if you were actually to use those in a setup like this, the question is, why would you do that? Why would you waste that much time on such a complicated knot? Why not do something simple? Why not do something fast? Why not do something that's secure? You can mimic me, spend five seconds on each knot, or you can spend 30 seconds on each knot. It's up to you. And we're not even talking about the breakdown time. It goes along the lines of like, keep it simple, stupid. You may have heard that saying before. That's what I've done. It may not be pretty, but it's functional. Talking about the tarp itself, every single guy line has been attached using a slip knot. First off, they're super easy to put on, but also they're super easy to take off. Oftentimes when you're out in the forest, you don't have trees in the perfect spots, so you need additional lines. Because I'm using slip knots, I can take off the lines that I'm not using, I can use those to extend other lines, and I can get the perfect setup. All the while, I'm only fooling with this for seconds instead of minutes. With all that being said, let's talk about the knots that I've used in this situation. With the tarp that you set up, if you don't relieve the tension, the stress from the knot, it can make the knot super, super tight. And ultimately, it can be difficult to take that knot apart when it's time to break everything down. That simple wrap right there relieves stress from the knot itself. Once I wrap for detensioning, then I move on to the knot. Now, personally, I like a one pull knot solution. I wanna be able to, when it comes time to break everything down, I wanna pull one time and the entire tarp collapses. That's what I like, and that's what I've done here. What you're looking at is a bow knot, a one pull knot. And again, because we wrapped around that post there, you could also wrap around the tree if you want to, there's no tension on that knot. So when it comes time to untying it, it's just one pull, nice and easy, and from there the entire tarp will collapse. That, my friends, is the easiest way to set up a tarp. And it's also incredibly secure, and you can make easy adjustments if you need to. You can see here that I've taken the tarp, I've tied it to the rock, and basically that's an anchoring point. I have a post in the center of this to raise the roof, and this anchor point keeps that post into place. I set this tarp up for nice weather, but if I need to make adjustments, I can. Those are the knots that I use, and that's my methodology. For myself, it's all about getting it done. It's all about functionality, not being pretty. Anyways, folks, all right, I have the tarp set up. Might as well set up the tent.
Now everyone, camp is set up, or at least the big items. The tarp is set up, and now the tent is set up. For this trip, this is a sort of tactical expedition. Some of it truly is tactical gear, while some of it is just tactical looking. There is a big difference. Even with that being said, tactical looking gear is still cool. It's still cool. What I'm using as far as the tent goes is the Nature Hike Canyon one-person tent. This is an instant pop-up tent. It takes about 20 seconds to set up and you're good to go. Inside of this, I have the sleeping pad. I have a jacket that I'm going to use as my pillow. And I have the U.S. Military Whoopi Blanket, which is also known as the Poncho Liner. It is beginning to rain. I mean, it's light. Don't get me wrong. But it's definitely dripping through the trees here. For this trip, I've decided that I'm not going to look at the radar at all. What comes in, comes in, it's going to be a surprise. Even though like my service is spotty, I do have just a little bit here and there. Every 10 minutes or so, it may work and I can pull up the radar. But for this trip, I'm going blind, completely blind. All right, we've talked about the tarp, we've talked about the tent. By the way, the tarp is the Helicon Tex tarp. The backpack, this is from Eberly Stock and this is the little brother. Overall, I like this system. This is not bad at all. It's a rather small backpack. I did add the side pouches, I added a waist belt, and I also added the G-frame. When it comes to Everly Stock backpacks, they're designed more for utility than for comfort. So, it doesn't really matter which Everly Stock pack that you go with, at least in my opinion. The overall comfort of the bags is just so-so. Like, you can get the job done, but utility comes first, then comfort. And that definitely is true with the Little Brother backpack. It's just comfortable enough to get the job done. I'm hearing thunder. It's back here. The clouds are actually moving this direction, so you never know. We might actually get hit by a thunderstorm. As I mentioned with the tarp here, I set it up rather high. That's just so I can easily move around underneath it. I have excellent airflow, but if I need to, I can lower this down. <laughs> by the way, folks, I've mentioned before that we don't really have mosquitoes in this area. What we have are black flies, and they are highly annoying. And they're just everywhere. Tons and tons of them. I say it's coffee time, folks. After that, I'll fix the fire pit, gather some firewood. A few months ago, I was out here. I was working on a project. I came out of the forest. I was ready basically to hike down. As I came out of the forest, the sky was super, super black, right? I walk over to the edge where I could really see the view, which is stunning, by the way. There's this wall of dark clouds coming my direction, and I could see the rain curtains. I take the lens cap off my camera. I take some pictures. I put the camera up, rain gear on, I take off. Later that night, I get home. I pop the memory card in the computer. I start looking at those photos, and this was the best photo that I captured. What I love about this photo is the lightning bolt illuminating that rain curtain right next to it. That is beautiful, at least in my opinion.
Cheers, my friends. It is coffee time. As far as the weather goes, it's not raining anymore. I'm not hearing any thunder. It is dark though, and it's also getting a little bit windy. I'm going to take just a little bit of water and cool that down. It's already pretty strong, so eh, I don't have to worry about diluting it or anything like that. Let's try it again. Perfect, my friends, perfect. Just like today, today is perfect. The conditions are incredibly pleasant. I'd say the only thing that's like getting on my nerves are all of the black flies. I'm not sure if you all have seen them flying around, but they are everywhere. Luckily, I mean, they just kind of land on you. They don't really bite or anything like that. It could be worse. Trust me, I know this, right? It could be like the black flies in Maine. They are something else. Uh-oh. It says here, there's a risk of severe weather in this area within the next 24 hours. Anyways, folks, what do you all think about that lightning photo that I captured? That photo, after I took it, I posted it online, it went viral. The last time that I checked, it was getting close to 1 million views. That's pretty awesome. It was a featured photo at DeviantArt, which is a popular photo sharing site, art site. That photo is one that really proves the point that like sometimes photography is nothing but luck. <laughs> Pure luck. Like I just came out of the forest, I saw some dark clouds, the rain curtains, snapped some photos, the storm was coming in, I put everything up and then ran away. I was out in the open and I definitely didn't want to get caught out in that nasty storm, so I just took off. Anyways, my friends, let's talk about the snake that we saw when we first got here. What did you say it was? If you said copperhead, you would be incorrect. That is a northern water snake. Hopefully you all could have seen the head. If you saw the head, then you would have known that it was non-venomous. That is not an uncommon snake. But I have to say, I've never seen one up here. Usually those snakes stay close to bodies of water. Ponds, lakes, creeks, and so on. There's not a creek anywhere nearby. Not up here. Over the last couple of minutes, folks, I've begun hearing thunder again. I came out of the edge of the forest here, and the entire sky is black. It is pouring the rain over here. Here, nothing. <laughs> Maybe 10 miles away, it's dumping. As it stands, everyone, I have enough firewood here to have a fire tonight. This will last a few hours, and that's all that I need. I'll tell you what, though, it's now almost six o'clock, and I'm getting hungry. Why don't we see what I have for dinner? Beans and wieners. That's what I brought with me. This is a Canadian MRE. It says 18 menu one. Military ration, not for resale. Oh, yeah. Military ration, not for resale, like us on Facebook. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It's funny that you would see that on a military MRE. Okay. So we have sliced peaches, a performance bar, performance, apple and brown sugar crunchy cereal, hot sauce, peanut butter, coffee, oh yeah. Matches, compressed napkin, beverage bag, sports drinks, strawberry jelly, or jam I guess, Tic Tacs, hamburger bun, beans, and wieners. We have a spoon spork, some paper towels, and that's that. All of a sudden there's been a shift in the weather. 
The temperature has dropped about eight degrees. The winds are now coming from the south towards the north, whereas before they're going the opposite direction. That tells me that there's a front coming through. That doesn't mean that it's going to rain, but that does explain like the storms that we've had around us. It's kind of funny how that works. <laughs> Five minutes ago, I was warm. Now I'm chilly. Let's give this performance bar a shot. Real peanut butter, 65 grams. Then after this, we'll make dinner. Gosh, that looks like performance, don't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah, that is so hard. Ugh, that is horrendous. <laughs> I'll be back. That was absolutely terrible. Like truly, that was disgusting. Now, in the defense of this MRE, there's no telling how old this is. Actually, let's look. Unfortunately, I don't see a date on it. Something like this really doesn't go bad. You can tell by just looking at it. That was not good. I went ahead and I made one of the grape drinks. Let's try it out. It's good. I actually expected it to be sweeter. It's really not that bad. By the way, folks, this is my garbage bag. I ordered these off of Amazon. They are incredibly thick, very, very large, and they are perfect for camp garbage. Plus, they do a really good job of like sealing in odors. They're not bear proof or anything like that, but they really do work well and they don't take up much space. I will leave a link to these in the description box for you all if you're interested. As for my dinner, folks, it is now done. Heated up inside of the bag in some warm water. And it's hot, like really hot. This is a nice, simple way to warm up a meal as long as you have extra water, enough water to spare. The benefit to doing this is that you don't mess up your pot. When you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have no easy way to wash your pots, something like this works great. 
you heat it up inside of the bag, and you eat from the bag. Dear Lord, please don't let it taste like that peanut butter bar. Amen. <laughs> I kid, I kid. No, I'm serious. That peanut butter bar is gross. Mm-hmm. Tons of weenie in this thing. There's a ton of wiener in this. <laughs> I'm surprised at how many hot dog chunks are inside of this, quite a bit. As far as the time goes, it's about seven o'clock. The sun is going down. The last little bit of light is streaming through the forest here. Going back to what I was saying earlier about knots, I'd like to reiterate again, when it comes to tying knots, do whatever you want to. If you want to make them fancy, go for it. For myself, it's all about efficiency, right? You want to be secure, but you want to get it done. No playing around. Minutes matter when you're in the outdoors. 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, 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 so on and so forth. Everything adds up. And when you have weather coming in, the potential of weather, that's why you want to get things done as fast as possible. I would recommend experimenting to figure out what it is that you like best, what works best for you. Ultimately, it is time and experience in the forest that's going to dictate what you use, what you do. The more time you spend out here, the more you realize that you just want to get the job done. You want to do it safely. Again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's kind of funny. <laughs> many, many years ago, it was after I quit working at a factory. I was a supervisor over two departments in a factory. Anyways, so I quit that job. I absolutely hated it. And I went to work for a buddy of mine who's a painter. He had his own painting company. So we were on a job site in a richy part of town. And um, we just got there that morning. Someone had gone to get an extension cord for my buddy's truck. And I guess whoever had it last had basically braided the thing right it was a fancy way of rolling that thing up and my buddy fired that guy on the spot for wasting time i think back to that moment often as sort of a life lesson right it's all about not wasting time time is the ultimate commodity it's something that you cannot get back not only your time somebody else's their dime time is money as the saying goes and definitely as you get older, time begins weighing on you more and more, and you begin to realize just how important it is. There's a saying in regards to time, and you may have heard this before, time is what we want most, but what we use worst. And that is definitely true.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is about six o'clock now. As you all can hear, it's raining, it's foggy, and there's a storm out there somewhere. I've been hearing thunder for roughly 45 minutes or so. I haven't checked the radar. I have no idea where it's at. I made a promise to you all to give up radar. <laughs> Did I do that? I don't know, whatever. I slept great last night. Minus one thing. I had raging heartburn from that MRE last night. Whew. It has lit me up. <laughs> It's funny, it's like, I'm not someone who gets heartburn all that often, but there was something about that MRE. I don't know, maybe it was like past its prime. I looked on there, I couldn't find the date. I don't know. But yeah, I was going to have the bun with the jelly and the peanut butter, but forget it, I'm not going to. One and done, my friends, one and done. tell you what folks this jacket is overkill it is not that chilly <laughs> I'm about to burst into flames and it's only like six o'clock in the morning the summer is here already for the most part temperature wise it's not officially summer yet still storming out there. I can tell now that the storm is moving away and I'm not hearing anything from behind us. It really is a nice way to wake up. Stormy Sunday morning. It was a quiet night. Didn't hear anything. The winds have picked up so there was some like creaking in the forest and every once in a while you hear a creak and you're like, well, what did I just hear there? Was that something? <laughs> Was that more than just a tree rubbing? Sometimes it would sound pretty weird. Yeah, slept good everybody, slept good. Cheers my friends, cheers. Yeah, it's coffee time. Let's see here. As for some updates, let's talk about my foot here. In a few episodes back, I discussed an injury to my heel. And since that point in time, I have heard from so many of you all with some fantastic ideas. So one idea was to take the insole on the inside of the shoe here and cut a hole in it at the heel. And I tell you what, that was the best idea in the entire world. That came from a viewer named Lassie, I believe. I believe that's how they pronounce her name. 
And basically, by cutting a hole in the insole there, it relieves pressure from the tendon that's all torn up down there. So, it works incredibly well. Thank you so much. Also, thank you everybody who sent in ideas. I've been taking like an idea from over here, an idea over from here, and together, the foot's doing okay. Which is a whole lot better than like, awful, so. <laughs> Cheers to being okay and not awful. It definitely feels good to feel good. You know what I mean? Without a doubt, this injury has slowed me down some. The simple fact is I cannot hike very far with this injury. I could do about five miles and at that point I'm done. I've been wanting to do another creeper walk. And if you haven't seen that series of videos, the creeper walk, it's a 34 mile walk from Damascus, Virginia to Abington and back. I do it pretty much every single year. Did I do it last year? Anyways, I've been wanting to do it again, but there's just no way I could do it right now. I guess I could bike it, but that's really not the same thing. Biking it is rather easy. Some would say it's hard, but it's not that bad. Hopefully it'll heal up fast, but unfortunately, I don't think it will. This is one of those injuries that's going to take a long time. According to everything I've read, what I was told by the doctor, what I was told by you all, which includes foot doctors. Again, everybody, I appreciate your help so much. Thank you. Let's take a second here and let's talk about how well the gear performed on this trip. The tarp, excellent. I'm looking forward to breaking this down and showing you all step by step how easy this is. One pull, <laughs> the tarp comes down. Anyways, the tent did a good job. I love how you can set that tent up. The only thing is about this tent, the company used so much fabric on the inside, it's really warm and airflow is awful. So for a cool trip like this, great. For locations that are hotter than this, not so great because you're gonna be hot inside of it, you're gonna sweat, you're not going to get any airflow. Overall, the design of this tent could be better. <laughs> also, there's no guy line points on this tent, like none. The way that it sets up is amazing, the weight's not bad. The tent could be improved upon greatly. For some people, it's going to be a good tent. For most, it's not. As far as the backpack goes, that is from, again, Everly Stock. That's the little brother. And I do like this pack. As far as looks go, 10. As far as comfort goes, 6. As far as adaptability and versatility, 9. I went with a solid fuel stove for this trip, and that has worked well. <laughs> that Canadian MRE, awful. It's a shame that I don't have any firewood left. Having a fire this morning would be nice, just to cut the edge out of the air. It's really, again, not that cold. But with the dampness, the wind, yeah, a fire would be nice. I guess I could gather some firewood. It's not super wet. But I don't think that's what I'm going to do. Today is supposed to be another warm day. So I think my plan is basically just to enjoy the coffee, begin breaking everything down, and it's time to beat feet and get out of here. Eventually the sun is going to burn away all of the fog and cloud cover, and it's gonna get muggy. It'd be nice to get out of here while it's still cool. That's especially true considering the hike that I gotta do out of here, which involves going uphill this direction.
It is now time to break down the tarp. Watch how quickly this is done. Check this out, everybody. Just like that. That, my friends, is how it's done. Nice and easy, super simple. I mean, you can set up a tarp in about two minutes. You can break it down in 30 seconds. With my tarp setups, I always have six guy lines. Typically, I use four, but I have two additional so I can set up no matter where I'm at. In the real world, you're not going to have perfect tree placement, so it's always a good idea to have some additional guy lines. As far as the knots go, keep it simple. You're not anchoring a boat, so don't waste your time tying elaborate knots. There's a saying, learn knots or tie lots, and it's true. My friends, it is time for me to go. Camp has been cleaned up, the fire's out, gear's packed up. Now it's time to head to the top of this mountain and go down. Thank you all so much for joining me for this trip. I will see you next week. Take care, strength and honor. By the way, make sure to hit the like button. It helps a lot. Strength and honor, my friends. See ya.